Blog Talk Radio. All righty, welcome back to Zoot's Boxing Talk, the boxing show where we give you a sweet sign straight up with no twist. And the call-in number for the show is 347-857-2761. And uh, my next guest uh, is coming off of an impressive victory on uh, the Boxino tournament on ESPN's Friday Night Fight, unanimous decision victory, six rounds, uh a sweep, 60-54 in all three uh, judges' scorecards over Ricardo Pinel. Uh, and a replacement fight, so to speak, uh, was a last-minute replacement, John Thompson the fourth. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. Now, John, you, they, they they told us on uh, the television that you, you were a last minute replacement, but you were kind of a guy on standby, so to speak. So you were hoping for this to happen. What was the process like for you as a replacement fighter, so to speak? How how, how does that work? Well, as a replacement fighter, I just actually I'm on standby, just waiting for them to let me know if I'm fighting or not. Um, I just had to uh, show up to the weigh-ins. And um, I actually got a call um, on my way up there, and he told me that one of the guys was looking like that he was overweight, but I didn't know he was sure until I actually got to the way in. Now, how long were, how long before that were you notified, and, and how were, as part of this uh, replacement pool, and how were you chosen? Was it something where you had to uh, apply? How did, how did the process of you being chosen as a replacement player work? I'm not talking about some motor content. And, uh, being on the Boxing No Tournament uh, show on the ESPN2. And uh, immediately, you know, I told him I would love to be a part of it, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm in the gym still working out, you know. I mean, I should just be ready just as any other fight. Only thing is, I just have to, you know, work on as to what type of opponent I might be fighting, you know. Yeah, well, as a last-minute re- replacement, you really didn't have time to study your opponent at all, I don't think, Ricardo Pinel. But you were aware of the fighters that were in the in the pool already. Did you do any yes. studying of the fighters uh, prior, and what type what type of studying did you do? Yeah, I had to look at you know the different st- styles as to the fighters. But uh, as you know, I mean the variety of styles uh, in this tournament alone. And um, going into each fight, you would have to study each opponent uh, separately. Now, you certainly uh, were a guy who was ready. I mean, at 6-1, you certainly posed a th- different look for Pinnell. Uh, so that that certainly was in, in your favor. Uh, you came, certainly came in with a lot of physical advantages, and you used them. Now, one of the themes of this tournament for you and a lot of the other fighters that fought was uh, being out a long time. You had a long layoff. Your, your last fight was on the, it was January of 2014. Tell us a little bit about what the life was like for you during this layoff. How were you keeping yourself busy? And if you were not part of uh, this replacement, when were you anticipating getting back in the ring? Well, um, I was supposed to be getting to the ring uh, March the 13th, I believe. Um, I believe somewhere in Virginia. But, uh, I I mean, I've been in the gym working out. You know, I'm always constantly working out. I had um, another fight which was scheduled, I believe, in December. But something happened with my opponents. Um, I had like two or three opponents in which something happened uh, between uh, January and uh, November of last year. Okay, now going into fi- into the fight with Pinal, you were very aggressive right off the bat. You established your height and, and your reach, and you were very ag- aggressive early. Uh, w- was that your game plan, uh, no matter who you were fighting, or did you think that was the best approach for for Pinal? Because you, you certainly blitzed him early. Well, I mean, Styles went fights, you know. In the first round, I just sort of felt him out, and just to see as to how he would actually react to, you know, different things. But, I mean, he seemed as though he just wanted to keep coming in. He wasn't really as to, and just just for boxing, you know, he wanted to brawl. So, 
Um, I just felt that that would make the fight much easier just boxing him. Well, you certainly uh, you certainly did get hit uh, with a good shot in uh, round three, uh, and, and you did that. You, you certainly went away and you kept your distance and you were able to control the rest of the round. Now, coming off of, uh, of a big knockout loss, how important was it for you for your tin, for your chin to be tested like that? Um, I mean, it's not like I can't take a punch. I mean, I could take a punch. I've been hit before. Um, I mean, I've been knocked out one time. I got hit, you know, with a good punch. It just was unexpected, you know. I mean, anybody can get knocked out, but, hey, you know what happens. Now, certainly uh, you showcased your skills when you did get hit with that big punch. What, what, was it as devastating as it looked to us in that third round when Pinel looked like he hit you with a very big shot? You, you used the ring in your favor the rest of the fight. How, how hard of a punch was it? No, not for me. Um, I believe from the outside looking in, maybe I, I guess my coach probably felt the same way, you know, whereas though, when I got hit, I mean, it made me upset. I wanted to, I was ready to fight, you know, but I told they, how you, I think that's the part when I actually started laughing because I went to go, you know, start trying to fight, and I heard them yell at me. They're like, yo, what the heck you doing? So like, you got to box them, and I just started boxing again. I'm like, ah, I pump it, and they won't let me do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I mean, either way, it works for us because it was, it was fun to watch you. Uh, keep him on the outside, but it would have been fun for a, a little brawling, and it never hurts the, not the fans anyway. I mean, I know why your corner said not to do it, but uh, it certainly would have been fun to watch. But uh, you, you you cruise the rest of the way. You've definitely uh, used uh, all your uh, advantages, and you, you certainly won a tough fight. Uh, I don't think there was any surprise when the scorecards were read. Uh, now moving forward, you're fighting who people are saying in this Stanislav uh who is, uh, might have been the most impressive fighter uh, of the night and one of the front runners uh, in this tournament. Uh, certainly a different style than Pinnell, a little bit more aggressive, probably a little bit more power. What are you looking forward to in that fight? I believe that's um, that's an opinion on uh, which uh, I definitely can agree upon. But I would say that you know, um, Scarhood uh, is more so of a boxer than Pinnell. Uh, he's he's taller, um, but you know, after him being a boxer, that just honestly makes it easier for me. You know. Now, now this, one of the good things about this tournament for the fans, and uh, I assume it's the same for the fighters, is it's quick. I mean, we've been uh, treated to tournaments where it has not been resolved for a couple of years, uh, going back to the Showtime stuff. This one, uh, as a fighter, if you are going to be successful in this tournament, you have to win three times in 67 days. And uh, it, it's a regimen I'm sure you're welcome to, but what kind of adjustments do you have to make uh, in terms of training having to fight so frequently in the next couple of months? I love it. Actually, I love it. Um, I mean, as to training, uh, training uh, changing, I would say that there are seven weeks uh, in, in between each uh, fight. So, I mean, the first, you're not going to be out of shape, you know. I'm not I'm not out of shape from my first fight, you know. So, I mean, you take a week off and I have five more weeks to actually train. And, you know, I mean, I'm only doing an extra two rounds, going from six to eight, you know. I don't want to wear and tear my body and just keep jumping right back into the gym, you know. I mean, after a while, you know, your muscles start to break down. So, you know, taking a week off and, uh, you know, start, start right back, you know, like where I left off, you know, building up a little bit. As to for the next five weeks, and then I have another week less, one more week after the next five weeks to actually, you know, steal down and then fight time. You know, your your muscles rejuvenated a little bit that last week, you know, so you should be like that ready on the ball to get in shape for the next fight. All right. And the, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I, I thought I had another mic malfunction, but not yet. Uh, the, the next fight is April the 3rd, which is uh, very quick. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I was looking to find out. I'm not exactly sure where the fight is. Is it going to be in, in Connecticut? 
No, it was going to be in California. Oh, okay. So uh, well, you have to travel out to the West Coast. You're you're a guy, a New Jersey guy. Uh, uh, you've had yeah. some experience fighting in a lot of uh, uh, different venues. Uh, I, I don't think you've fought out in the, that West, right? You haven't. Is it going to be your first time in California? Not as not uh, boxing there as a pro. This is my first mm-hmm. time fighting. I mean, I've trained out there. Um, last actually, last winter with uh, Andre Ward, which was pretty cool. I worked with him for about two months. All right. And uh, before we let you go, I want to get a little bit of uh, – pick your brain a little bit in, in terms of uh, what you uh, like as a boxing fan, some of the fighters you might have uh, watched, uh, old-time fighters or fighters today that you are, are just a fan. Of. Maybe not so much that you want to copy them, but uh, who are some of the guys, some of your top favorite uh, boxers, uh, whether it's uh, you know guys who are still fighting or guys from the past? Who do you admire? I I – Admired Lamont Peterson as an amateur. Um, I also admired um, what is this guy, Eric Morales, uh, when I was an amateur. Uh, he was a pro. Great that guy. I mean, those two guys in particular, I felt as though executed things so precisely. Is like it, it it motivated me. You know, watching. I mean, everything. You know, from their boxing style to, I mean, as pivoting, just their movement. Itself just motivated me. All right, and uh, this will never happen. At least we hope not. But uh, let's say they outlaw boxing; it doesn't exist anymore. What would the John Thompson the Fourth be doing for a living if uh, there was no boxing? If there wasn't any boxing, yes, I would be. How would I you would make your movie? Just my art. I'm an artist. Oh, okay, good. Uh, and so, can tell us a little bit of where we could see some of your artwork if it's out there. Um, you can actually see some of my artwork on Instagram at Apollo, that's A-P-O-L-L-O underscore Picasso, P-I-C-A-S-S-O. And I have a lot of my artwork up there. Um, other than that, uh, you can see it uh, throughout my Facebook, which is, you know, a little bit harder to find, but um, John Apollo Kid, Apollo Kid is A-P-O-L-L-O-K-I-D-D, that's two Ds. Um, Thompson, the fourth IV. All right, and if you can, this is interesting. How, how does your artwork and, and the boxing, how do they complement each other for you? And I'm thinking more mentally, like when you're getting prepared for a fight or when you're, you're putting together a piece. I mean, you're talking about artistry, and although boxing is an art in itself, it's very violent. So how do they, they <laughs> the two complement each other for you? Um, I mean... Honestly, they they don't necessarily coincide unless um, you can say, I mean, my mindset for both are the same. You know, um, boxing is actually not as violent as what everybody think it is. You know, from the, as from the outside looking in, from the inside looking out, you know, you're not necessarily thinking just violence. You're thinking technique. You're thinking, you know, um, precision. You're thinking dexterity um, because, I mean, you think of structure. I mean, it's very it's very structured. You know, is a is a way you have to go about things. Other than that, it's like it'll just be fighting. That's why it's not fighting; it's boxing. Oh yeah, definitely. It's definitely an art to boxing, but uh, at the end of the day, you are punching people in the face, which is a little <laughs> bit different than than than, than uh, you know putting a painting on on, on canvas. So to speak, have so much, you have to have a lot of control, though. Um, oh, definitely, you, sure. Just like you know, a lot of people go in there. I've seen it happen millions of times. They They'd be wanting to fight. It could be the back one. Twelfth round, it beat the guy up all every round. They just go in there just all willy nilly and boom, get hit with one lucky shot because guess what? They wasn't actually focused on what they're supposed to have been doing. You know, I mean, you just can't go in there and just think, okay, I'm fighting someone. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a strategy. You know, just like with painting, right. you don't, you don't go into a painting, just, uh, just start and just take black and just throw the whole, throw it all into the picture because at the end of the day, black is too dominant. So. You know, unless you're just, you know, just trying to make something abstract, everything's gonna, is gonna fall apart. Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely hear what you're saying there. 
And uh, they're definitely looking forward to. I'm going to check that artwork out. I'm, uh, I'm interested in that because I, I can't draw what the damn John. So I, I'm, I always marvel at people who have that ability. It, it's, it's amazing to me. But uh, another thing that's amazing to me is watching uh, you guys lace up the clubs and, and, and uh, you know, show your skills there. And we'll definitely look forward to the fight on uh, April the third uh, against uh, Stanislav Skarahart. I hope I'm not butchering that name. Too much. A uh, guy coming in with a big knockout uh, percentage and one of the front runners, and uh, you, you'll certainly give him all you can. And uh, we're looking forward to a very tough fight as the Boxino tournament uh, continues. And I'll give you some final words before we let you go. Okay. Um, uh, final words. I mean, I look forward to fighting and putting on a show, entertaining for you guys. That's also myself. You know, I look forward to the, um, just winning this tournament. You know, that's what I'm gonna officially celebrate, you know, after the tournament's over and I raised my hand and I got that belt around my waist. Um, looking into this fight April 3rd, I uh, actually will be bringing out one of my paintings with me, so just keep an eye out. All righty. Thank you, John Thompson the fourth, the Apollo Kid. Uh, great artist, both in and out of the ring, and uh, we thank you for your time here on Toots Boxing Talk. Talk to you again soon. All right, got it. All right, thank you. Interesting. Uh, they, they might have said that on the uh, the telecast about his artwork. I don't recall. Sometimes I tune those guys out when I'm watching the fights. But uh, and definitely good. I, I find that a, a fascinating balance. And he's right. I mean, it's not just going in there and fighting. There's an art to it, but uh, there is violence to it as well. And uh, the, the two suit themselves pretty well, I think. And uh, a lot of uh, artists have... Uh, a lot of demons to fight as well, uh, and it's a little different uh, than the fighting in the ring. But good contrast there, and a good, good performance by John coming off of a uh, big knockout loss and a long layoff, stepping up and uh, replacing, uh, I don't even remember who the fighter is right now, but uh, coming in, guy couldn't make weight. So this is uh, John Thompson, the fourth Wally Pip moment, so so to speak. He gets to be a little luckiest man on the face of the earth time, Lou Gehrig style. Coming in as a replacement and doing stellar with it. And uh, thank you for your time, John. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get Thomas Cornflake Lamar.